So I don't know what I was thinking here. I was I saw at an auction this um, 100 watt solid state PA amplifier, and uh, uh, it's realistic. It's a Radio Shack brand, and um, I thought it looked kind of interesting. It was very affordable. Uh, apparently, it doesn't power up, and so I was going to take a look at it, see if I could get it up and running. Not sure what I'm going to do with it. It doesn't have a lot of um, utility but the thing's built like a tank it's really heavy so I thought I'd take a look and see if I could get this beauty uh, up and running again and uh, doesn't have a lot of controls these are just different microphone inputs and a phonograph input volume and then tone somebody's replaced the tone button uh, with this very strange button here um, and then on the back you've got different um, uh, different outputs um, for different types of speakers, aux in, phono, mics, and I don't know what's happened here. Somebody's pulled the switches or whether they've just fallen in. Screws have come out and they've fallen in. Uh, apparently a past inspection, that's good news. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. What, oh, this must be the fuse here. Is that just missing? Yeah, so that that would maybe the reason that's not powering on. I don't know. We'll see. Left my screw gun out in the garage, so doing it the old-fashioned way oh very cool yeah so this looks like a well-built piece of equipment this transformer is really big um, the preamps are all transistor based uh, looks like you've got two great big transistors that are doing the output. I'm surprised they can do 100 watts. Yeah, so this is a heavy duty uh, piece of equipment here. Uh, oh, it looks like the switch here has just come apart. And uh, here somebody's taped it into, pl <laughs> taped it into place. Um, now this is the amplifier board. Honda. Interesting. Never seen that. And uh, yeah, so I like that amplifier board. And then the amplifier comes into a uh, a big transformer, but I think that's so you can do the the 70 volt. So the 25 volt or the 70 volt. I think um, that's for doing like speakers uh, in a building where you've got long runs um, yeah and then this yeah interesting yeah there's all kinds of cool stuff in here this is quite the transformer man it's a monster well I'm going to plug it in and see if it works okay so the the fuse here is missing the um, thing you screw in, and uh, so I've got my dim bulb tester here, and uh, I'm just going to jump her across the fuse and rely on my dim bulb tester to uh, show me if it's using too much current. So I'm going to turn it all down, coming into aux. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, Turn up the master volume. Oh, wait, look. I'll set the aux input halfway. Looks like it's working to me. So that's five volts peak to peak.
it does sound like there's a relay in here somewhere that's clicking. Hear it? Yeah. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean those pots because um, they're really scratchy. And I think that's causing it to jump around. And, uh, but it looks like it's working. I don't know. Crank up my output to one volt. Starting to clip right there, so that's 27.9 RMS. So 27.9 squared divided by 8. So that's 97 watts. Yeah, so it's putting it out. I don't know how long it could last, so I mean it's just using the the bottom of the case as the um, heat sink. You'd think if you wanted to run full time. You'd need better cooling. Yeah, and that's at one kilohertz. And it's starting to warm up. Okay, I got some switches. Uh, they go in the back here. Those switches have broken out. And um, they're just kind of taped together. So I'm going to solder in new ones and uh, make sure they fit. They do and double pull, double throw, and uh, this is just, uh, this is what's referred to as a type S switch, I guess? I don't know. That's what I found. So I'm just going to unsolder these, these here, and the one that's underneath the tape, and then I'll put in these switches here, so that we can go into whisper mode if we have to. And of course I got these from DigiKey. And uh, they weren't that they weren't that expensive. I think they were like three bucks a piece. They seem reasonable quality. Um, they're held in pretty securely here. So let's see what we've got underneath here. Okay, there we all we are all soldered in the new switch, and then I just have to connect this down to here, and then I'll be good. And I'm just going to put a tiny dab of Loctite on there. Yeah, it looks like those are riveted in. Talk about goofy. I wasn't sure about doing that, but boy, it sure looks a lot nicer um, with the new switches. Okay, so I got kind of lucky here. So this came without the fuse, and so I bought a bag of 10 fuse things because it's the sort of thing you need, but... Um, I'm pretty excited to see that the cap just fits in so I don't have to replace the whole shabby shebang. So I'd take a look at the transistors just for the fun of it. 
So it's interesting that the bottom is aluminum, which is kind of nice because it's the heat sink. So it looks like a Hitachi 2S D675. Same thing. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it seems... Usually when you see amps that have this much power, they have more transistors than this. That's very technical, I know. But uh, collector power dissipation, 100 watts. Well, it's a 100 watt amplifier. Um, and I'm sure that's shared between the two, but uh, still, that seems like you're kind of pushing it a little bit, but nobody asked me. So I was going to update these capacitors in here, and uh, so I pulled out these screws here, which held in this guy, like that, and then this screw from underneath, and then voila, it just comes right out, which is quite nice. I can set it on its side and um, replace those capacitors pretty easily. So one of the things I do when I recapping, I have a hard time knowing where um, capacitors are. And so I have this little laser and I shine the laser just right to the side of the capacitor. Then I can come around here and um, And you can kind of see where the capacitor is right there and uh, it makes it a lot I easier spend a lot of time taking out the wrong part and uh, this really works for me there you go I got it on the first hit Okay, so I finished replacing all these smaller caps in here. There's a handful of them. They're super easy to do because this comes off so nicely and kind of flips up. Don't have to disconnect anything. And But these two here, these larger ones, they're 63 volts and I didn't have anything in that size. And so I just left them there in good condition. Uh, I also just left these because they didn't have big ones like this either. So, uh, but the... These didn't seem too bad. I, they didn't seem like any of them were uh, completely off. So, I don't know. I don't think they're... And there's some weird ones, too. Like, uh, this is a... Uh, it's a very small one, but it's a different brand. Uh, but all the illness seemed good, so... No big whoop. All right. So, I just wanted to first give... Uh, I wanted to talk about the the response of this uh, PA amp. All right, to characterize the signal for this amp, I've got this software called True RTA. And it's a little bit basic looking, but what it does is it uh, runs on your PC and then it takes the sound card and then outputs a sweep starting from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, right? And you put that into your amplifier, and then you come back and um, you bring the signal coming out of your amplifier into your sound card. And uh, and what it does then is it characterizes the signal response um, of the amplifier. And so uh, the problem is is that this here is way too high a voltage for um, a sound card or a data acquisition board. And um, so what I did is I just created a little circuit so I have my um, my ground and then my signal coming in here and then I have a voltage divider like this 
and then out of the volt so I think this is a uh, hundred K and I think this is 5k and um, and then this coming out here this is a signal going into the um, the sound card and so uh, the other thing I've done is that uh, I wanted to um, protect it from over voltage so I put some light emitting diodes uh, some yellow ones so they have I think about a 1.8 volt uh, threshold and I put those in there to kind of protect the circuit and so so that's what you'll you'll be seeing um, here let me show you what I did so here's my voltage divider here and the wires come from my dummy load which is hooked up to the amplifier and then from the voltage divider and there's a little potentiometer so if I want to adjust it I can it comes over here into this uh, essentially what is a sound card but it's a little fancier than that and um, and from there into the PC and then once the PC when the PC generates a signal it comes out here and I have that hooked into the amplifier now the amplifier I'm going to be looking at first is this nice carver um, amplifier here so we're going to look at this and uh, maybe as a uh, an ideal case and then we'll be looking at the realistic after that so here I have the input and output signal uh, being displayed at the same time and because that's a lower voltage signal is there's some noise on it uh, but I think we've got 14 volts peak to peak and then um, an output through the voltage divider of about right around 800 millivolts so right now I'm just doing um, I'm just doing a frequency response here and you can see we're outputting at 1 kilohertz and we've got a nice peak here really pretty clean down here and um, so that's all good news I don't know what this right here is all about but um, yeah so everything's nice and clean okay so now I'm gonna go like this I'm gonna turn off the signal generator and I'm going to turn off the, oops, I think I turned off and on. Okay, so we turn it off. And then, oh, I wonder if that's 120 20 hertz there. Um, and then we're going to do what's a quick sweep. And I already did it. Now look how clean this is going all the way from 20 Hertz over to 20 kilohertz super nice like <laughs> nice super nice response all the way across right that's the carver amp and here you can watch on the scope when I do the quick sweep I'll do it again it's pretty fast all right, so that's the Carver amp. Now let's look at the realistic. Okay, so now I have my Radio Shack MPA100 hooked up, and um, all hooked up here. All right, first let's look at it live at 100 kilohertz, and we're seeing. A lot of distortion here and even here which is a little bit surprising um, and I bet if I turn it up we're seeing a lot of distortion so if I start to crank it up It's right at about 27, 27 volts RMS. And if I look at that, so if I go 27 times 27 divided by 8, that's about 90 watts. So it, it really doesn't just, it's got that, that, just, that, distortion but so it's got that distortion like I showed you but if um, 
If I crank it up, right around there it starts acting funky. That's around 78, 80 watts. That's kind of a lot coming out of this guy, I think. Two transistors. Okay, I had to <laughs> turn the fans on on my dummy load because that is putting out a lot of power. Um, so now let's try to see what a sweep looks like. So that's with the, the tone right in the center. Uh, we're seeing it's really not coming up until about 100 hertz, but that's what it's advertised. It's advertised as 100 to 10 uh, kilohertz. Uh, but then, once, then we're getting that full potential. Now let me crank the tone all the way to one direction. That's not that much difference. You're seeing it kind of coming down a little bit at the end. Let's go the other direction, all the way to zero. Yeah, and then you're really dropping off. Then you're really focusing on um, the mid-range. Right, so I think that's pretty interesting. Um, I haven't tried it out yet. I mean, I haven't tried it out as a PA, so I'm going to give that a try next, and then I think we'll wrap this guy up. All right, well, that's our video. Taking apart the MPA100 uh, realistic uh, PA amplifier, and uh, it's actually a very well-built piece of equipment. Uh, not something an audiophile would really want or love for music, but if you've got a bingo hall or uh, wanted to make announcements and uh, or maybe owned a, a department store that would be great attention shoppers we have a blue light special in aisle five carrots only a dollar ninety nine a pound for the next hour thank you it'd be perfect just what you need anyway thanks for coming along and I hope you enjoyed the part where we looked at um, uh, the frequency response of this, it's the first time I've ever used that software, and I liked it a lot. And um, so yeah, so if you liked it, just hit like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.